Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing a review of my Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Uh, I've had quite a few requests to actually film this and I'm finally getting around to it. I purchased this back in September last year and I really wanted to have a chance to use it properly before I shared my thoughts so that I could give you a really accurate depiction of the wear and tear and also how I think it functions as a bag. So I am going to have on the screen here some timestamps of all of the different aspects that I'm going to be running through including why I bought it, the wear and tear, um, how I purchased it, design details, uh, what fits inside and also my final thoughts if I think it's worth it. Uh, and so starting with the reason why I purchased this, as many of you will know, uh, in March I gave birth to a baby boy and I wanted to buy myself something a little bit special that I could use as a nappy bag, but that I could also use once our son is old enough just as an everyday handbag. And I ended up settling on the Louis Vuitton Neverfull style just because it is a classic. I mean, this bag is one of those ones that I know will not date. I'll still be able to wear it years and years in the future. And I actually decided to go with the Damia Aben print just because I felt it was a little bit more subtle than the classic monogram. And again, just being a dark brown chocolate color, I thought it would just work with my wardrobe, you know, even in 20 years time. The other reason why I chose to go with this particular colorway is because I felt like the leather on this would be a lot more hard wearing than the Vachetta leather. I wouldn't have to worry about it staining or the patina or anything like that. So I really just wanted something that was relatively carefree. And I did go with the rose ballerine lining just as I have a card holder with the same color combination. So I thought it'd be nice to have a matching set. I'm just going to put the bag down while I talk through how I purchased it as I didn't actually buy it directly from a Louis Vuitton store. I did try to buy it through their online store and it was unavailable and when I spoke with their customer service they told me that it was so in demand, the co um, combination that I was after, that it wasn't going to be available until potentially March or April of 2020. And at the time, I mean, I knew I was having a baby in March and I really wanted to be able to use the bag before the baby arrived as well so that I could get a real sense of how it functioned. So for me, the timeline wasn't really going to work and I just had my heart set on it. So I decided to go through a personal shopper. Her name's Gab Waller and she's an Australian and actually you can contact her regardless of where you live in the world. Um, and I think I had found her just through um, someone else sharing that they had used her for purchasing a particular item and I decided to reach out to her and see whether she would be able to help me source this bag. Um, so I have had so many questions about her fees and um, I paid $220 and that's the sourcing fee um, because the bag was over a certain amount but if the item that you are looking to purchase is less than a certain amount I feel like it's $1,500 Australian then it's less it might be $180 so obviously if this is an item that you're happy to wait for then I don't think you need to go through the personal shopper route but if you really have your heart set on it and you're finding it just impossible to track down then Gab was amazing she got back to me within a few hours of me reaching out to her and within 24 hours she had tracked down the bag for me. I think it might have come from Paris. I'm not 100% sure I didn't ask but uh, yeah I was just really really impressed with the service and I think once I paid uh, you get 24 hours to uh, make payment for the item it arrived a few days later. So it was a really fast service and I would 100% use her again if I was trying to track something down that was just impossible to get my hands on. But I do wanna say this bag was expensive and if it weren't for the fact that I wanted it for when the baby arrived, I would have just waited until it was back in stock at the Louis Vuitton store. So that is how I purchased it. Now in terms of the design details, and I do actually have a little compartment organizer in here, which I will talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, it's just basically the coated canvas material. So this is not leather, but it is incredibly durable and very, very hard wearing. So I can run my nails on it and it's not going to get scratched at all, which is great if you want a bag that can easily be thrown around. It does have the leather trim as I mentioned and the leather handles here. Uh, there are these uh, pulls on the side so you can tuck the sides of the bag in and um, tighten these if you wish. I personally prefer the way the bag looks completely open. Uh, then there is a clasp at the top of the bag here and I will do some close-ups uh, which 
basically holds it together so that all of your belongings aren't going to fall out. Uh, the base of the bag is very flat, <laughs> which is great because it stands up on its own. And then, as I mentioned, the interior lining of mine, um, I went with the Rose Ballerine rather than the classic red. Uh, it is basically just a... Um, I would say this is kind of like a cotton nylon mix lining so you could just wipe it down with baby wipes there is one large pocket here and then it also comes with this little matching pochette as well which I believe has cut it's got a couple of slots in there zips closed so good for putting in any personal items or um, I guess more valuable possessions because it is attached to the bag so that is sort of the design details, it's a very simple tote, you just throw everything in kind of thing. Uh, so I am going to also show you a bit of a side by side with how this looks compared to my Kuyana and also my Everlane tote because I think it's good to always get a little bit of a um, sense of how it compares to other bags. I did go with the MM size which is the medium bag size so not the largest. And the reason why I did that was because I'd spoken to a few people I knew who went with the GM size, that's the grand size, um, and they felt that it was a little bit too big. So I think maybe if you were using formula and you needed to carry around a lot of different things when you were going around day to day, then potentially the GM size might be bigger as you probably have a few more bits and pieces. But um, I am nursing, so I wasn't really thinking that I was going to need a bag to carry everything I just really need to be able to put things like a, a nappy change mat and also you know nappies and change of clothes that sort of thing in here so uh, yeah that was sort of why I decided to go with this particular size and also for reference I'm 172 centimeters tall or 5 foot 8 so I also wanted a bag that didn't feel too big against my frame I would say I feel like this is probably about the same size as my Kuyana tote feels a little bit smaller than the Everlane tote now in terms of the wear and tear, I have to say, from the exterior, it looks pristine. It looks essentially brand new. It's probably softened up a little bit, but honestly, I haven't noticed any marking or anything like that, not even along the edges. I mean, I'm really impressed and I can completely understand and appreciate why people love Louis Vuitton coated canvas pieces because, like I said, they, they really are just so hard wearing. The only wear that I would notice is probably a little bit of marking on the interior because it is more of that cotton nylon finish So, and also being a light color, it is going to be a bit prone to getting marked up. If you're just sort of throwing things in, which I have been doing until I got this organizer. Uh, maybe I'll pull this out and I can potentially show you. There is sort of a little bit of dust and I molt a lot, so I think there's one of my hairs in there. <laughs> Something like that. But um, yeah, I found that it's just held up really well and I, from the outside, wouldn't even know that it had been worn. So yeah, that's so you can see it, how it looks. There's no kind of uh, creasing or anything like that. I have had it stuffed with items uh, since purchasing it so it's not going to crease up. I have seen some people's which are really old or that they've had for years and years and years and they have just stored it flat and that does have some creasing but I think if you would pull it out and use it it would just freshen itself up pretty quickly. So I will show you what fits inside. I'm going to show you an aerial view of everything that you can get in here. It is a pretty spacious bag and I can get everything that I need in this bag. One thing I do want to mention because I did say I bought a handbag organizer. I bought this off an Etsy seller. I think most people tend to use the ones from Samorga uh, but I was just looking for something that was relatively affordable and that I could also get in a matching felt uh, color to the lining. I'm not a big fan of the handbag organizer. I think it's very practical and I can completely appreciate why people use them and that it can be really functional. But for me, I found that it really limited how I could stack the bag up. So I have a couple of things here. I'm just gonna show you before I do the aerial view. So I have this little uh, nappy change mat, which is great, but it's quite kind of puffy. Then I have this little zip up pouch, which I got with my girlfriend collective a gym kit. And in here, this is where I put change of clothes nappies and also wet wipes so you know I mean these are quite large and then the other thing that I have is um, the blue book or the personal health record for baby and these are the three things that I really just want to have in my handbag all the time and I have found when I want to put other things in the bag it's just really difficult to keep all of these three things in there uh, and be able to also close the clasp on the bag so 
in hindsight, I really don't think I needed to purchase this. I will link the Etsy seller down below in case this is something you would like to check out. It took a really long time to arrive. Uh, I think it took two months from when I purchased it, partly because it came from China uh, around the time that the pandemic was really starting to kick off. So I think that it was probably delayed in customs for that reason. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's really great in terms of all the compartments it offers, but in terms of what I'm looking for for my handbag, this really isn't for me. So um, I'm going to be taking it out and I won't be using it moving forward. But yeah, uh, I think that's totally down to personal choice. Here's a look at the bag from above so you can get a really good sense of the actual width of it and how much you can fit inside. So I'm just going to start filling this up so you can see everything that I can get in here. And it really is very roomy in the MM size. So I think if you got the GM size, it would be enormous. Probably only something I'd recommend for people who are tall. So I can fit my laptop in there, but I'm using it at the moment as a screen. So I'm just going to pop Luke's iPad in here. Then, as I mentioned, I've got that change mat. I have my little zip up pouch filled with nappies and a change of clothes. I've got that notebook here, the health book for baby. I have my own notebook. I've got my key case, my card case, and also my car keys. So those all fit in that little side pocket at the back there. Also got a health bar, which I'll just drop down the side. I've got a water bottle, uh, perfume, a lip, a couple of lip products here, which I just put in that side pocket. A hand sanitizer. I could potentially also fit a scarf in there on the top, but I think it would be a little bit full. And I could get my sunglasses in here too, although I would say I'd put them in here in a case, not just on their own. I just uh, haven't grabbed it. So that is how it looks all done up. And um, if I put it flat, you can see it's not bulging at the seams or anything like that. So I definitely do have a bit more room in there. It's not completely filled up. So I think it's a really good amount of items to be able to fit in the bag. Additionally, I thought it might be helpful for you to see how the organizer looks in the actual bag. So I'm just gonna pop this in here. And that is what it looks like. So you've got tons of little compartments there. The only thing I will say is that if you do pull the sides of the bag together, there is a squared off section here which I don't know if that would crease the bag uh, as you continue to wear it over time. So that was a look at everything that fits inside. Overall I have to say that I am really really happy with my purchase. It was something I considered for years. I had been wanting to really you know invest in a beautiful bag from Louis Vuitton and I felt like a Neverfull was a great starter option particularly because it's a classic and I mean you really can't go wrong with a tote bag. I like the fact that the uh, straps fit really comfortably over my shoulder and I've got room underneath so it's not feeling too tight and I can hug it very close to my body. It doesn't really seem to stick out too widely and I do feel like it's not you know super heavy or anything like that either when I've got it completely full <laughs> and on its own without anything it is very very lightweight considering the fact that it is made out of a coated canvas as opposed to the leather because full leather bags can be a little bit heavy. Um, I'm really pleased with the wear and tear as I said it looks pretty much pristine. I mean I do tend to look after my belongings but I wouldn't say that I baby them so uh, this is probably you know snagged on things and there really are no marks. I probably will give it a little bit of a vacuum on the interior because it is a bit dusty and also just use some wet wipes to kind of uh, tidy up where there are a couple of little marks but aside from that yeah I think it it's worn really well on the interior as well. I like the little pocket on the side here. This is fantastic. It's where I generally, generally tend to keep my uh, little card case and also my keys uh, and lip balm. So I find that very convenient. I would say the one thing that I don't use at all is this pouch here. The only time I used it was when I went to New Zealand and I put my passport in here, maybe my boarding pass, a couple things like that that I wanted to be able to pull out really easily. But for me, this really isn't a necessity and it's something that I could keep out of the bag and it would actually make the bag a little bit lighter. 
but I do think it's great because you can use this as a little pouch if you were going on holiday. So I use this as my airplane carry-on and you could use this as a little um, pouch when you're going out in the evening if you're on a vacation or something like that, you know, when we are allowed to travel again. So that is, I think, really a uh, wonderful sort of addition to have with the bag. Uh, in terms of the price, I mean, obviously it's very expensive for a tote bag and I've said this so many times, you do not need to spend thousands on a handbag. I mean, you can get so many incredible handbags at a much lower price point. The Kuyana tote is amazing. I've kind of said that it's sort of my ride or die tote that is uh, well made and also a reasonable price point. Um, I mean, I've had mine for years now and it has held up so well. Eveline also make a really great tote bag. However, I do feel like uh, it's a lot more uh, floppy once it's been worn in. And also I really love Linya as well for leather tote bags uh, and just leather bags in general because they're very high quality and I feel like they stand up to the quality of my design handbags. So they do a beautiful tote too, which has just a uh, magnetic closure. So yeah, I mean, I think there are so many options out there if you want to buy a tote bag that looks beautiful and that is going to be functional, but if you want to invest in a luxury handbag uh, or a luxury tote bag, should I say, I don't think you can go wrong with a Neverfull. I mean, I've really been happy with it. I'm even spending more than the actual retail price to purchase it. I've been really pleased and I am glad that I made that investment. And it's something that I know I'm going to cherish and love for years and I think it's even more special because it's been sort of a baby bag, but it'll be something I'll be able to wear until years time and have lots of fond memories attached to it. So that is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull in the MM size and the dummy at a bend print with the rose bellerine lining. I hope that you found this review helpful. Um, if you've got any other questions about the bag or about the purchasing process that I went through then please drop that down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.